Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this tutorial. This is Hua Zhe Wang. I am a PhD student from University of Virginia, and it is my great honor to cover the next section of this tutorial, efficient exploration in complicated real-world environments. In previous section, we have covered uh, several classical exploration strategies for both stochastic bandits and linear bandits. These classical algorithms has very good theoretical guarantees in terms of regret. <clears throat> However, uh, in many uh, real-world environments, there are uh, directly applying this classical uh, exploration st strategies uh, may not give us uh, satisfying uh, performance and we are motivated to explore how to design more efficient exploration strategies that can leverage problem dependent uh, unique properties so in this section <clears throat> in this section i'm going to cover three different directions uh, in this line of research the first, sec uh, the first direction is called collaborative bandit learning, where uh, the research focus is in a multi-user environment. And the goal is to design uh, efficient exploration strategies that leverage the user dependency structure. The second direction is uh, how to design exploration strategy for problem with low rank structures. And the third direction is how to combine offline historical data to warm start the algorithm that, uh, and so that to reduce the exploration. So let's get started with the first line of research, collab collaborative bandit learning. Here, the problem studied a multi-agent linear bandit setting where the bandit algorithm is serving end users and each user has his, her, his or her own unknown preference parameter theta. <clears throat> so how to solve this multi-agent linear bandit problem? A naive approach is to build an independent linear CB for each user. Is this naive solution satisfying? The answer is not. Um, there are two main drawbacks. The first is uh, because uh, if we are building independent linear CB for each user, then for each user, we will be facing the code starts challenge and needs, to, needs a lot of uh, exploration uh, iterations to uh, learn the user's preference. And the second observation is users are actually not independent to each other. Uh, on the contrary, users uh, are highly correlated and also influencing each other via social networks. So the goal of collaborative bandit learning is to leverage user dependency to design efficient exploration strategies. There are uh, two types of works. The first type of works in this line is to try to leverage existing user dependency information, for example, the connectivities or the social network informations. The second type of the research is uh, try to solve the problem when the user dependency information is unknown and aims to uh, discover this dependency structure on the fly via clustering technique. So the first uh, work we are going to introduce is Goblin algorithm uh, the, that's leverage a existing user connectivity information uh, for exploration. So here the assumption of Goblin algorithm is that connected users are assumed to share similar model parameters to each other. Uh, based on this assumption, the algorithm you designed a graph Laplacian based regularization upon rich regression to model the user dependency. Uh, specifically, the regularization term in Goblin algorithm includes two parts. 
the first part is, uh, as we can see here, is the classical L2 regularization. Uh, each user i's uh, own parameter estimation theta i. While the second term is the regularization uh, over connected users. Uh, so the assumption is that when two users i and j are connected to each other in the graph E, then they should share similar parameters. And thus, the algorithm tries to penalize the difference between theta i and theta j. And uh, what is the effect of this uh, regularization? Uh, an illustrative example is like this. Say here we have four users that are connected to each other. So based on, some, based on the assumption, they should share similar parameters. And let's look at, for example, for user one, uh, his parameter theta one will be moved closer to his friends, user two, three, and four, and uh, uh, via this uh, regularization. So how Goblin algorithm uh, really implements uh, this uh, regularization. So the idea is to encode the graph Laplacian matrix in the context vector and formulate this problem as a dn dimensional linear CB, where the d is the dimensionality of the context vector x and the each user's own parameter theta, and n is the number of users. So here is how uh, so here is how Goblin algorithm uh, create, uh, encodes the context vector x delta for certain user u and certain item a. And uh, based on this uh, some, uh, based on this uh, construction, Goblin algorithm is uh, essentially optimizing towards a linear CB problem with underlying parameter theta star equals to this. Uh, so essentially, it's a projected uh, vector of every user's uh, a concatenation of uh, n users' uh, true parameters, their own theta star. And based on this formulation, uh, the algorithm used bridge regression to estimate uh, the parameter theta star. And uh, here is uh, the closed form estimator of the ridge regression. So what is the benefit of Goblin algorithm comparing to uh, building an independent linear CB for each user? Let's look at the regret of Goblin algorithm under two extreme cases. So for the first case is when the uh, graph is an empty graph, that is, users are independent to each other. In this case, uh, Goblin algorithm is equivalent to building uh, to uh, independently estimate an linear CB for each user because users are disconnected to each other, and the regret is in the order of n square root of t log e n over uh, t over n. And another, uh, the second extreme case is when the graph is a complete graph. That is, uh, every user is uh, connected to each other. Uh, in this case, uh, the underlying environment is, uh, is uh, fully connected. And uh, Goblin algorithm uh, reached a uh, minimum uh, regret because every users are connected to each other and uh, every user is similar to each other. So in that case, uh, Goblin algorithm can really leverage this regularization term for uh, faster uh, parameter estimation and exploration. In this case, uh, the regret of Goblin algorithm is in the order of n square root of t log e t over n square. So, which we see a uh, regret regret reduction in the uh, in the log term, uh, in the log t term, and uh, which is the benefit of uh, leveraging the regularization or leveraging the user dependency structure uh, in the Goblin algorithm. 
So following up, uh, we will cover uh, another work called coding algorithm that also leverage the user dependency structure, but in a different way. So coding algorithm, uh, the assumption is uh, uh, there exists social influence among users. Uh, that tries uh, and the algorithm tries to model the content and opinion sharing in, in a social network W. So here is an example. The assumption is the rewards of uh, a user uh, on an item should be a weighted average of expected reward among his friends. And the weight is uh, a uh, uh, and the weight is uh, is this wij that sums up to one. Uh, so, for example, uh, so so what's the meaning of this uh, uh, social influence network w? It essentially tries to describe the uh, the <coughs> influence uh, of one user to the other. For example, if we look at the matrix here, uh, we see that for user four, 50% uh, uh, of his opinion comes from his own preferences. And another 50% of his opinion comes from his friend user three's opinion. So uh, this is the uh, assumption of uh, how content and opinion sharing uh, happens via this social network. And by uh, realizing this social network W, we can, uh, the coding algorithm also models the, formulates the problem as a DN dimensional Lin UCB, where the, the way of encoding the uh, user dependency structure W is slightly different from a uh, Goblin algorithm. And after the uh, uh, the construction of the context vector, uh, then one can still use the ridge regression to uh, estimate the model parameter of coding algorithm. And here is the regret of coding algorithm. And similarly, we consider that there are uh, we consider two extreme cases to show the advantage of coding algorithm. So the first case is when the graph is a empty graph that users are independent to each other. In that case, the social network uh, matrix W is equals to identity matrix, uh, which means every user's opinion is only depends on his or her own preference. Uh, and independent from uh, any other users in the network. Uh, in this case, the regret is similar as building an independent new CB in the order of n square root of t log e t over n. While when the second extreme case is when users are highly correlated to each other and the, uh, the dependency matrix W equals to uniform matrix, that is, uh, every element in the matrix uh, equals to one over n. In this case, uh, we will see that the environment has a maximum uh, opinion sharing uh, by, among this network. And uh, the algorithm can fully leverage uh, every, uh, not only every user's own opinion, but also uh, his or her friend's opinion in this social network and achieves a much smaller regrets in the order of n square root of t, uh, log e t over uh, n square. And the reason is because when w is uniform, uh, that is all users are uniformly connected to share, uh, this uh, summation of uh, wij square term is the minimum that equals to one. So, uh, so as for now, we have introduced two uh, different algorithms that tries to leverage the existing user dependency structures. Uh, while they uh, enjoy uh, regret reductions when this uh, dependency structure really exists, a uh, major limitation drawback of this type of algorithm is they assume the uh, 
uh, user dependency structure is an input to the algorithm. That is, it's uh, given ahead of the time. However, in many cases, uh, in many real world problems, this user dependency structure is unknown to the bandit algorithm. Uh, and uh, which motivates the second type of research in collaborative bandit learning that tries to discover user dependency structure on the fly via online clustering technique. Um, the first uh, paper in, the, in this line of online clustering of bandits is a club algorithm, which adaptively cluster users into groups by uh, keep removing edges between users. So the algorithm starts with a fully connected uh, graph that uh, assumes every user be belongs to the same uh, big cluster. And how the club algorithm, uh, how club algorithm uh, remove the edges? So the threshold to remove edges is based on the closeness of the user's models. So here is the uh, threshold to remove an edge. The idea is that when two connected users, i and j, uh, model theta i and theta j are different and the difference is larger than a certain threshold, uh, that means the two users are really different from each other and they should be disconnected. And here is a illustration that after, after uh, the algorithm remove edges, it will try to re-identify the clusters. For example, after removing the edges, now we form two clusters between the four users. And after that, the algorithm tries to build independent UCB for each cluster. And uh, within each cluster, the LinUCB actually aggregates every user's uh, historical uh, data to build one uh, uh, and use one linear regression to estimate the parameter for this cluster. And the regret of the algorithm is in the order of square root of m t log t, which reduces the regret from n. Uh, re which reduces the regrets in terms of a coefficient from m to uh, from n, which is the number of users, to m, which is the number of clusters. So intuitively, the benefit of club algorithm is that it can uh, correctly aggregate uh, data uh, or observations uh, within the same cluster, uh, so that. Uh, each cluster can, uh, within each cluster, there are more observations and enjoys faster convergence. And there are also some following up works uh, in this line of online clustering of bandits. Uh, the, uh, the next work we are going to introduce is called Coffee Bar, which, try, which is inspired by collaborative filtering and tries to uh, do co-clustering on both users and items. So the main idea of Coffee Bar is that each item cluster should be associated with its own unique user cluster. So here is an example. Suppose for the financial news article cluster on the left-hand side, uh, we may find a clustering that uh, user one, user three have share similar opinions on this on this uh, financial news clusters, while user two and user four shares uh, different uh, shares uh, forms another user cluster that share similar opinions on this specific item clusters. And if we change the item cluster to sports news, the user clustering may look different, and. Uh, and this is what uh, motiv uh, this is the motivation of coffee bar algorithm. So how the algorithm really achieved this unique clustering, uh, unique user clustering for different item cluster. So the use uh, so the way of building user clustering for uh, coffee bar is the same as club. 
while the i the idea to build uh, item clustering is unique that is uh for two items uh for a specific user i uh, the algorithm tries to form a neighboring uh, user set based on the closeness of their uh, opinion that is for example for uh, speci uh for this <coughs> user one the algorithm will try to see uh, who are the users that share similar opinions for this item clusters and uh, if the for the two items the user i will form different neighboring user sets then that means uh, they should the two items should not belong to the same item cluster and the algorithm will remove an edge between the two items And the next uh, work we are going to introduce is called CAP that tries to do context dependent clustering. So this is a even more flexible clustering uh, strategies that for current user I, uh, the algorithm tries to find the neighboring user set for every candidate item uh, XA. Uh, and uh, then, uh, once finding this uh, user set, the algorithm will aggregate the historical rewards or the prediction uh, within the user clusters and to ask uh, to build, uh, for example, to build a linear, uh, to build a linear CB for this specific uh, user cluster corresponding to candidate item XA and use the group's wisdom to predict reward and forms uh, UCB uh, for this candidate item. So uh, different from previous uh, algorithm that uh, generates uh, static uh, user clusters, uh, this algorithm will actually generate uh, dynamic clusters for every candidate item. Uh, so, Next, we will going to introduce the second uh, line of research uh, to in this uh, design efficient exploration strategy for complicated environments. That is uh, how to explore for uh, low rank structures. So the first work we will introduce is called uh, particle Thompson sampling. Which, it, which studies a problem under probabilistic matrix factorization framework. In this framework, uh, we have, uh, on the row side, we have n different users, and on the column side, we have n different items. And both the user latent factor and item latent factors are unknown. And the goal is to use this, uh, matrix factorization framework to estimate the unknown user and item latent factors. So the generation of the, uh, so here is the uh, generative model of the uh, probabilistic matrix factorization framework where UI is the user latent factor, uh, is the latent factor for user I and VG is the latent factor for item J. Uh, so the algorithm employs uh, particle filtering for uh, online basing parameter estimation. And based on the parameter estimation, it used Thompson sampling for exploration. And we will not cover the technical details of uh, how to do the uh, particle filtering for parameter estimation. And instead, we will, let's discuss uh, about the regrets of this algorithm. So the analysis of the, this uh, problem, uh, the regret of this problem is for special cases uh, where the uh, elements in U and V belongs to a discretized parameter space uh, that are uh, D different options from D to D and close and then up until one, where one over D is an integer. 
Uh, so the regrets of this uh, particle Thompson sampling algorithm under this uh, special cases is in the order of log t over uh, delta square, where delta equals to d square is the gap between the best and second best rewards. So as uh, you, uh, as we know, this is what we call by a problem dependent or gap dependent regret bound in the order of log t. And uh, essentially, uh, based on this uh, discretized parameter space assumption, the problem is n times m uh, rank one problem, and which makes the uh, regret analysis doable. Uh, and uh, so for this specific rank one problem, there is another work that tries to improve uh, that enjoys a uh, better regret. Uh, the work is called uh, Renquan Bandits. So it's a similar uh, matrix factorization framework uh, where the rewards for a specific cell Rij equals to Uit times Vjt. And in, in this uh, problem, the uh, latent factor Ut and Vt are sampled uh, from unknown distribution every iteration. And um, the key reason this algorithm enjoys better regret is because of their uh, improved exploration strategy. So their algorithm is a explore then eliminate uh, algorithm, uh, which maintains the upper and lower confidence bound of rewards for each row and column. So the exploration strategy for this rank one bandits is to just uh, is to randomly explore a uh, not so bad row and column uh, for every stage, and after the exploration, the algorithm tries to eliminate the rows and columns uh, if its uh, upper confidence bounds uh, on the reward is even worse than other rows or columns lower confidence bound. In that case, such row or column can never be the uh, best row or the best column. So in that case, it will never uh, really uh, generate the uh, best reward for an item. And it is safe to el eliminate those row or columns. So the regret of this uh, rank one bandits is improved to O uh, log T over uh, delta, uh, which is improved from one over delta uh, from one over delta square to one over delta in this uh, in this paper. And the uh, next work uh, we will introduce is called uh, hidden lean CB which is uh, also built on a uh, matrix factorization frameworks that tries to estimate both user and item factors. And the motivation of uh, hidden linear CB is in this way. Uh, the assumption is that uh, when uh, in a linear bandit problem, uh, there may be some important features that is unknown or unobserved to the bandit algorithm. For example, here, the full feature set is assumed to be uh, the concatenation of X, A, T, and V, A, T, while the V, A, T part is the hidden feature that is known to the environment but unknown to the learner. So the bandit algorithm needs to estimate uh, both unknown user preference parameter theta and also the hidden feature or the item factors V. And the source of uncertainty in confidence bound estimation comes from the both unknown, feature, uh, unknown factors. So the algorithm of uh, hidden in UCB use alternating least squares for parameter estimation and their exploration strategy considers uncertainty from two factors, uh, where uh, the both factors are in a similar form of uh, linear CB. And the first uh, uncertainty, uh, the first exploration term is the uncertainty of user preference theta estimation. 
And the second uncertainty terms is the uh, uncertainty from a uh, hidden feature V's estimation. So in that way, the algorithm designed a uh, linear CP style exploration strategies to uh, adapt with this matrix factorization framework. The third line of research uh, in this section is warm start exploration. So the motivation also comes from a uh, real world uh, problem. That is in many real world applications, we may have some offline data, uh, for example, from human annotations, uh, even before a bandit algorithm starts. Uh, and the main challenge is how to leverage this uh, historical data to warm start the model so that we may reduce the need of exploration because we all know that exploration can be costful. The key challenge of this problem is historical data could come from different distributions. For example, in a linear bandit setting, the historical data may be generated by a parameter theta prime, while the environment actually follows another parameter theta star. In that case, we cannot simply just uh, aggregate or uh, concatenate the offline data as the historical observation of the bandit algorithm, because that will inevitably introduce a huge bias into the uh, environment estimation. So in order, to, uh, in order to solve this challenge, a uh, recent work called uh, Adaptive Reweighting Algorithm uh, is developed. And uh, this algorithm is based on the classical epsilon greedy uh, algorithm. And uh, the, the idea is to reweight the historical data based on bandit uh, bandit algorithm observation. And essentially the algorithm tries to learn uh, weight lambda uh, on historical data and another weight on um, uh, one, and then we can have a weight one minus lambda on bandit observations. And the key challenge is to use a uh, online model selection to pick the uh, corresponding weight lambda, which is predefined in a, a candidate set that is in the range of zero to one. Uh, in the in their paper, uh, so so this is a hyperparameter, and in the paper, the uh, the candidate lambda are set to eight different values, varying from zero point one to one, uh, and the uh, and the algorithm, uh, essentially the algorithm can achieve a great regret reduction when the historical data and the environment have similar distribution, which is intuitive uh, because if uh, historical data and environment indeed have similar distributions, then we can have a higher weight on uh, historical data, and which means we can uh, leverage more information to warm start the bandits. However, if the historical data and the environment are different, uh, then in order to avoid introducing bias, uh, the algorithm will find a smaller weight, uh, lambda. Uh, and in that case, the historical data won't be very helpful to reduce the regret for the bandit algorithm. And now we want to raise some open questions uh, in this line of research uh, that we feel are important uh, future works. So the first open question is, what is the problem related or specifically structure related regret lower bound for this, uh, for this uh, specific uh, efficient exploration algorithms? So, uh, so previously, we 
studied, uh, we discussed different structures, for example, a user dependency structure, low rank structure, or using offline data. And our question is essentially, uh, the current algorithms uh, we introduced, for example, the ones we introduced, fully utilize the information in the problem structure. Uh, if, uh, if so, uh, for example, if we can find a matched lower bound in terms of this uh, problem, uh, a matched uh, lower bound and upper bound in terms of this structure, then we can safely say that the algorithm indeed utilize the information in the structure as much as possible and is indeed the most efficient exploration strategies. So another open question is, uh, another law of future works is uh, to study efficient exploration for other structures in real world problems that we didn't cover in this uh, section of the tutorial. For example, there are several, uh, there are many recent works in the line of uh, online sparse bandits that tries to leverage the sparse structures uh, for uh, ex exploration. And also how to leverage the structures in ranking problems for exploration, et cetera. Here are the references for uh, this section. And uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions in the live chats or in the QA sessions. And uh, let's take a break now and move on to the QA sessions in the Zoom. Thank you. <laughs>